Welcome back to you're now watching the third video in my series on functions. So now we're going to launch into something a bit more interesting. And the next several videos, we're just going to keep building on this example. At some point, it might uh, start to make some sense. The first two examples, we just wrote functions, and we wrote functions basically for the purpose of writing functions. Hopefully, this will illustrate why you might use functions. So, unfortunately, for this program, I'm going to need to actually create some bit of a backstory. So that's probably going to take a minute or two. Maybe we can understand what we're doing, and then everything will make a little bit more sense. So in this example, we're going to address the idea of creating bad guys. Right? So imagine if we were creating a game. Right? I don't know what kind of game. It doesn't really matter. But there's the idea that you, as the player, start off at a low level right like level one and as you advance your level increases and you might get to level 10 or level 100 it all depends on context but there's the idea that throughout the game you're gonna face many enemies maybe you're gonna fight thousands maybe it's tens of thousands maybe it's hundreds I don't know but the idea of repetition and so when I think about doing something over and over again uh, that lends itself to the idea of using functions and so the other part of this is that when I'm a level one character, you would probably think that the enemies that I'm battling against are going to be weaker than what they would be when I'm on level 100. So there's going to be a relationship between my level and the level of the bad guys. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a text box. And in that text box, I'm going to ask the user to enter their level. And of course, this doesn't really make sense, but that's okay. It's hard to make examples of the do with a form. Um, my text box, I'm just going through and naming my elements. Text level's a good idea. Um, I probably should have a button on here that says generate bad guy. Okay, so I'll name that uh, button gen. And the text on that button should be generate. Right, so I create this really basic form, and in theory, user's going to enter their level, press generate, and it's going to pop out a bad guy. Of course, creating bad guys that can't do anything with no graphical elements isn't that interesting, but we're going to do text-based bad guys. Right, so now I'm looking at the code design window, and what I'm going to do is when the user clicks the button, I'm going to create a couple of variables. One of those variables is going to be... Um, speed. So just this idea that the bad guys have a speed at which they move at, um, you know, all relative. So I don't know what number it should be, but I do know that that sounds to me like it should probably be an integer. Another variable that an enemy might have would be strength. And if I was going to think about what that should be, that could be a double, but I'm going to make it be an integer. So there's a lot of other things an enemy might have, like intelligence, and who knows? It all depends on context. So now, to flesh out this example a little bit more, and the storytelling and just backstory is going to be done soon enough, I'm thinking that on a low level, so if I'm level 1, enemies are going to have pretty low strength. If I'm on level 30, enemies are going to have a lot of strength. But let's think about speed for a minute. If I'm on level 1, Enemies are going to move around the screen, but if I'm on level 100, should enemies be flying around the screen? I don't know, and I don't, it's kind of your call, but I'm going to say that enemies are just going to move at, a, at just a standard speed, whatever that is. Uh, there are certainly games out there where as things get tougher, things go faster. Right? One example like that would be Tetris. Not exactly what you think of as your typical bad guy, but in Tetris things do go faster as the level advances. But then you've got uh, most games out there where speed is, is static. And so where I'm going with this is I want to create functions to assign these values. So I'm going to say speed equals, and I need to call a function. I don't have any functions, but I can assume that that function is probably going to be called set speed, right? And what am I going to pass set speed? So are there going to be any parameters for this function? Well, as I said a minute ago, speed is probably not going to depend on player level, so I probably don't need to pass it anything. 
right? And this is the problem. We've got an error here saying that there's no such thing as set speed. So what I need to do is I need to create a function for set speed. When I create a function, of course, I'm going to write function. I'm going to write set speed. And if there were parameters, I would define them here, but there are not. And so what does set speed return? Well, I'm assigning speed, whatever this returns, and speed's an integer. So this thing should return an integer. As I press enter, I get end function. This is good. And so now what I need to do is I want to generate a random number. So you may not have experience with random numbers. Generating a random number is not that straightforward. And this video is going to be a little bit longer because I have to go over this. So what I'm going to do is, if you notice, I'm up here at the class level. I'm going to create a, last, a class level uh, random number generator. I'm going to do it at the class level because I want all my functions to be able to use it. Now, I could just create a random number generator every time I wanted to use one, but I could also just create one and use it over and over again. So I'm going to call it, how about gen as system.random. Sorry, I have to think about it, right? It's not the most intuitive sentence in the world. So I've created a random number generator, and its name is Gen. I could call it whatever I wanted to call it, but I'm going to call it Gen. And so now down here, I need to know the syntax. So I've created a generator, but I need to tell it what kind of a number I want to generate. So down here in my function, I'm going to call that generator. And so I'm going to reference it by name. So gen.next. And then I'm going to, and so next is a function, and next expects two parameters. So if I want it to generate a random number between uh, 20 and 30, then I would write 20, comma 30. So I'm defining the bottom and the top end. So in theory, that should generate a number between 20 and 30. But notice how I didn't save it. I never assigned it to a value. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write a return statement right here. So I'm going to say, hey, return whatever that random number is. And this should work. All right, so I've created a function down here which generates a random number between 20 and 30. It doesn't have any parameters because in theory, right, the speed of my enemies is going to be, it's not, they're not going to get faster. So there's no need to share any information. The only information that's being shared is the information that's getting sent back to here. All right, and so I've called my function here. That's going to get set to speed. Let's write... Um, let's create a message box in order to make sure that this is working as it should. So I'm saying, hey, let's uh, when the user clicks a button, we're going to output the speed. And let's just see if this makes sense. Put in a level, irrelevant, I never even used it, if you noticed. I go generate, and I get a number like 27. And I generate again, and I get something like 21. Is that what we wanted? It looks like it is. It's generating numbers between 20 and 30. Uh, like I said, those numbers are always going to be between 20 and 30 because this function doesn't take anything. And if I wanted to make changes, so here's where functions really start to show some other value. Let's say I'm designing my game and I'm playing it and I'm thinking that's way too fast. Well, if that's too fast, and you can imagine this context where we have hundreds of enemies, if I didn't have functions, you, I would presumably have this line uh, hundreds of times throughout my program, and I'd need to go change it hundreds of times. But let's say I think that a reasonable speed is between 10 and 20. Now I've just changed one line in my program, and it's going to affect everyone who uses it and throughout the program. So now I'm going to get numbers between 10 and 20, and if I needed those speeds to be between 90 and 100, I think you could see how I would do that pretty easily. So the idea of reusability. That is just one reason you'd use this strategy. Um, in the next video, we'll talk about setting strength. It should be a shorter video. should be a little bit more interesting. And uh, I'll see you soon.